Hey guys, let's take a look at the variation today. And if it makes it easier for you, variation just is a proportion. That's all it is. Anytime you see variation, you can just write it as a ratio or a proportion. These are pretty simple to do. You can do them probably like on paper in a different way, but go ahead and learn the way that they teach you in Saxon um, because it'll make things a lot easier for future problems that you, that you solve. And let's do a couple of these. Um, you could do, you know, uh, well, before we even start about that, you could, you could make a, a general variation or proportion problem and go, oh, the number of, uh, you know, cups uh, varies with the number, or is proportional to the number of spoons or whatever. I mean, th th those kind of things are infinite. You'll see those, and you've seen them before. But let's do a couple of these. Go ahead and write this down. When you say, and when your book says, any variation of A or B, which says A varies directly with B, you will write it this way. A varies directly with B. And what's going to happen is A equals K, that stands for constant, you multiply it by B, all right? Anytime it says A varies indirectly with B, you divide it by B. Same equation except you divide it. So train your mind to think, if it varies directly, I multiply. If it varies indirectly, I divide. And we'll do a bunch of these examples. Your job at first is to find what the constant is and then apply that to the same equation, just plop it in there. And, uh, you know, that's just one way of doing variation. So let's write this. <clears throat> the number of shoes varied directly with the number of laces. If you want to write this down as an example, that's a good example to write, okay? The number of shoes varied directly with the number of laces. Well, we know that the direct variation uh, equation uses multiplication. It's this, A varies directly with B, okay? Well, let's put it in there. Number of shoes, that'll be S. That varies directly with the number of laces. Let's just do K times L. You can write like that if you want. All right, how about this one? The price varied inversely with the number bought. In other words, uh, the more, of, you, you probably know this, that the more you buy of something like in bulk, what happens to the price of it? It doesn't go up, it goes down, right? I mean, the more you buy of something, you know, a bigger box of homeschool Cheerios, a box, you know, 86 pounds, you know, for the typical homeschool family, the bigger you buy, the less per ounce it is. That's what this means. The price varied inversely. It's less because you bought more. It's not more. In other words, oh, you charge me more per ounce. I bought so much more. No, that's not the way it works in sales, okay? So this one, if it's inverse, it's this. A equals the constant goes divided, gets divided by B. And so the price varied inversely with the number bought. That means you're going to put K over the number bought. We can put N for number or whatever. That's how you write that. All right? The resistance is directly proportional to the length. The resistance is directly proportional to the length. Well, that's direct. So that's going to be our old friend here up there. So A equals K times B. So the resistance is equal to our constant times the length. It's a multiplication because it's direct. Okay? The number of RPM is inversely proportional to the number of teeth. In other words, the more teeth you have in a, in a piece of machinery, uh, that's the more teeth you have, the slower the RPM will be in this case. Okay, so the number of RPM is inversely proportional. So this is our equation we're going to use. So let's say RPM, we'll just call it R. I don't know, I guess R is inversely proportional. So that's going to be K on top to the number of teeth. Boom, there you go. That's what you'll use. And the purpose of this is so you can you can solve for K and then stick it in the new equation and find out what you're looking for, okay? Let's do a couple of these examples here. The number of boys in every classroom varies directly as the number of girls. In one room, there are eight boys and two girls. If there are five girls in another room, how many boys are in this room? You can probably look at that and go, wait a minute. The boys varies exactly with the, as the number of girls. If there's eight boys and two girls, that means there's four times as many boys. And if there's five girls, there must be 20 girls. And you'd be right, that's right. But let's go ahead and do it this way, uh, using the fractions. And uh, we'll do it a different way later on, the one you know better. But let's take a look at this one, okay? If it varies directly, the first thing you're gonna wanna write is this. You got A equals K times B, of course. We'll write boys vary directly as girls. So we'll go, um, boys vary directly as girls. Let me just put a dot there to kind of remind us we're multiplying. And we're going to use this one, okay? And they tell you, 
there are eight boys and two girls. Let's use that, okay? So we're gonna go, there's eight boys, and there are two girls, we don't know the constant, k times two. Well, if you just do the simple arithmetic, k times two is eight, well then we know k is four. Okay, there you go. We're not done yet. If there are five girls, how many boys are in this room? Okay, so we, we're gonna need to use this equation again, except for this time, we're gonna go ahead and slap in the value for k. That'll give us the answer, okay? So they tell us that there are five girls in another room, Okay, well, they're asking how many boys, let's just go ahead and write B. That's going to be equal to, we figured out K is 4, so let's just put 4 there. And the number of girls is 5, so B is 4 times 5, or 45. No, 20, of course. Right. And you knew the answer was 20. Anyway, this is just another way of solving it. Okay, let's try another one. The number of revolutions per minute, RPM, varies inversely as the number of teeth in the gear. In other words, the more teeth there are in a gear, the less the RPM is instead of the more. All right, if 40 teeth give you 100 RPM, what would be the RPM if the gear had 30 teeth? That's gonna surprise you a little bit, it might. All right, let's write the basic equation, okay? We've got revolutions per minute varies inversely. Okay, well, first off, our basic equation looks like this with inverse. It's the constant over B. Okay, so let's just kind of fill this in. Revolutions, blah, 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 varies inversely as number of teeth. Okay, let's stop right there. So we'll just call it R. That varies inversely, so that's K divided by, and then the number of teeth. Okay, that's our basic equation. Let's look at this uh, info here. If 40 teeth give you 100 RPM, we'll stop right there. 40 teeth, we'll just write this exact thing below. We got 100 RPM, that's what it gives you. 40 teeth, and then we don't know what the uh, constant is, okay? Well, K divided by 40 is 100. And of course, you could just do the uh, arithmetic on this anyhow, What you're gonna have to do to both sides, or unless you wanna just do it like this. K over 40 is 100 over one. You multiply those together, and we find that what number divided by 40 gives you 100? The answer is 4,000. So our constant here is 4,000. All right, now they ask you the question, you're gonna fill in the blanks to figure out what the missing information is. They ask you, what would be the RPM? Okay, so you can just write, this is your basic equation we're using. We don't know the RPM, just write R. That equals K divided by T. Well, K we figured out was 4,000. And then divided by T, which is, they say, 30. So there are a lot fewer teeth in this second uh, gear. And, you know, this is where you want to, you can use a calculator if you want to, and you would get 133.3. So the RPM is now greater than it was before. Right? And that's your basic uh, inverse variation problem. Okay, let's do another one. The number of clowns was directly proportional to the number of performers. Stop. Let's write the equation. Go ahead. Write the equation. The number of clowns is directly proportional to the number of performers. Pause it and write your basic equation. Okay, we start with this, and it's directly proportional. And then we can go, okay, I'm not going to do A and B. I'm going to use clowns and performers. So the number of clowns is directly proportional to the number of performers. That's our basic equation we're going to be piddling with. Okay, if there were 40 clowns, for 20,000 performers, stop. That's what the information you're gonna to use to find the K. So 40 clowns, clowns goes here. 40 equals K, we don't know. For 20,000, good grief in the morning. Okay, K times 20,000, that is a small number. Okay, <clears throat> so we have K is equal to 40 divided by 20,000, okay? We'll just do this. We'll slap off some zeros here. That's going to be 4 out of 2,000 or 1 out of 500. So K equals 1 out of 500. If you want to go ahead and put that um, uh, as a, a decimal, I guess you could put that as a decimal. That would be 0 0.002. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, there's your K. The question is, how many clowns 
per 12,000 performers. Okay, well, again, we're just going to use this right here. How many clowns? Clowns, we don't know. The K we figured was 0 0.002. Performers, they said, were 12,000. Okay, well, not too bad here. Um, even if without a calculator, you can do this. You can just move this over three times and make it a 2. Then move this over three times to match it to make that a 12. So the number of clowns there would be would be 2 times 12 or 24. And there you go. Okay. All right, we'll try the practice set. Give that a whirl. Give A a whirl. And then go ahead and pause it and we'll uh, do it together. Okay. Well, let's do this. Number of blue birds varies directly as the number of red birds. So let's go, let's go ahead and write that. I think we could probably do this just in one step. The number of blue birds varies directly with the number of red birds. There we go. That's our basic equation. One tree, there were 12 blue birds, three red birds. Okay, so this is a 12, and this is a 3. So 3 times what gives you 12? Okay, we figured out K is 4. We'll use that for the next equation. Another tree, there were six red birds. How many blue birds were in this tree? Well, let's just go ahead and use the same old one. How many blue birds? Blue birds, we don't know. K, we figured, was 4. So that's what this is here. And then they say six red birds. There we go. So obviously the blue birds were 24. And there we go. Which only makes sense. If there's four times as many blue birds here, there's four times as many here, 24. Okay. Okay, pause it and do B. Okay, number of RPN varies inversely as the number of teeth. Stop, let's do that together. Okay, so revolutions per minute varies inversely as the number of teeth. Okay, there we go. That's our basic equation. All right, we'll use that. 60 teeth give you 150 RPN. So let's just fill in the blanks here. So 150 RPM is from 60 teeth. Let's find out. 60 goes down here. And then, of course, you know, if you want to look at this this way and go 1 times K, in other words, 1 times K is 150 times 60. 15 times 6 is 90. And 1, 2 more zeros, 9,000. There is your K. That's the constant. The question now becomes, what would the RPM be if the gear had 100 teeth? Well, let's just use this again. We don't know what the RPM is, R, that's what we're asking. The K we know is 9,000. The gear had 100 teeth, that's what we stick down here. This is a pretty simple, you know, just knock out those, 90. So there you go. There's your uh, RPM. All right, you guys have a good rest of the day. See you next time.